Immersed Robot. Hello everyone, welcome to Immerse Robot. So the announcement of the PSVR 2 last week has been generally met with um, quite a positive response I'd say. But one subject I do keep seeing popping up when people are talking about it is the cable. And in this video I just want to talk about the reaction to this while I show some recently recorded footage of Fallout 4 VR which I've been playing on my Valve Index. And I'll use this just to make a few points later on in the video. But I think it's plain to see that the ideal scenario from Sony would have been to have some kind of wireless solution built into the PSVR 2. And I think Sony would have loved this to be the case too, but it's obviously not feasible for one reason or another. Now cost could be one of the primary reasons since a wireless solution isn't free and I'm sure they want to keep the price of the PSVR 2 as low as possible. It's a peripheral to the PS5 after all and we now live in a world where the Quest 2 is a very low cost all in one solution to entry level VR. So I'm sure Sony look at what the Quest 2 offers and how the public might perceive it when they inevitably compare it to the PSVR 2. So whether or not you see the Quest 2 as a true competitor to the AAA software which will arrive with the PSVR 2, I'm sure Sony are definitely keeping one eye on that product in order to keep the costs as low as possible. But if costs weren't an issue, then what wireless solution might PSVR 2 have employed? Now, a top contender for high quality wireless would have been the recently approved YGIG 2 standard, which has much higher throughput than the original YGIG used in the OG Vive adapter from quite a few years ago now. And both the YGIG and the YGIG 2 use the 60Hz frequency band, but the bandwidth is much higher on the YGIG 2 version. Now, I don't know the projected costs for any future projects which might use the new technology, but I assume that it won't be cheap initially and the fact that the Quest 2 has quite an impressive PC wireless streaming functionality over a standard 5GHz home network then this will probably make some people feel that the PSVR 2 should be capable of the same. But there's a few points to this really and first off the Quest 2 has an XR2 chip built into it which presumably the PSVR 2 won't have so again this might come back down to a costing issue but also the wireless streaming on a Quest 2 uses quite significant video compression and it also results in added latency as well. This can be mitigated through a dedicated AX router and under perfect conditions AirLink is very impressive as I've mentioned numerous times on this channel. But would Sony really want to settle on a wireless headset which has to use compressed video when in some ways they seem to be targeting fidelity with the PSVR 2 by using a reasonably high resolution display coupled with eye tracking and dynamic foveated rendering. In. Now these are really the two paths that Sony could go through, either the dedicated YGIG 2 solution which will offer really uncompressed video if they use that technology to um, its maximum capabilities then you will get pretty much an uncompressed feed through YGIG 2 or they could have gone the XR2 route like the Quest 2 which has built in Wi-Fi 6 and could have fed a compressed feed to the PSVR 2. Now it's possible we do see a wireless add-on from Sony at one time or another which uses YGIG 2 or even something closer to what the Quest 2 offers, although I do doubt the latter will be the case due to too many variables in terms of routers, number of connections and things like that. I think they would want a dedicated system and that might come in the form of a YGIG 2 system, but again that might have costs associated with it which make it a little bit too much for an add-on. But either way, is the cable of the PSVR 2 really that big a deal? And I can see both sides to this. I've seen a lot of people talking about whether the cable is a big problem for the PSVR 2 or not. And personally, I do think it's a real shame that the PSVR 2 doesn't have some kind of wireless solution built in. But is it going to stop me from buying it? Probably not. I recorded this footage of Fallout 4 VR on my Valve Index which was tethered by a cable to my PC in my home office. And although I don't particularly mind the cable most of the time, it does become an increasing annoyance the more I play wirelessly through AirLink on my Quest 2. Now when I first got my Vive back in 2016 I really couldn't have cared less about the cable and I just saw it as a necessary thing to play VR. But times have changed and although I can still play my Valve Index perfectly happily with the cable most of the time, I always play in my office with that particular system because it's where my PC is located. 
but the PSVR 2 will be located in the living room if I choose to buy one and this means a different set of considerations in my opinion. So looking back I think one of the main reasons I didn't play my original PSVR more was because it was located where my PS4 was in the living room with other family members around and wandering in and out. And in these circumstances, I do think it makes you more aware of obstructions such as the cable, especially if you have children running around as well. Now, of course, everyone's circumstances are different. And if you have your PS5 located in a dedicated games room or in a separate room, then this is less of an issue. Or if you just don't have those people wandering around your play space at all. But just talking for myself, I do consider the cable a bigger issue on console VR than it might be for a dedicated PC VR system. Again, at least in my particular circumstances, which I'm only using as an example here. The Quest 2 is also something I use a lot in my living room and I definitely find that by not having that cable, then it's far less of a concern when playing in that exact same area as I used to play my original PSVR. So I'm just using my own play space examples here, but this will vary for everyone, but I do consider the cable a big deal. It won't stop me from buying a PSVR 2 and I doubt it will stop many people from buying it who want to experience some of the heaviest finance AAA VR games we've seen to date hopefully at least, but it doesn't stop me from still thinking of it a little bit perhaps like the last remnant of last gen VR. The Quest 2 has almost made the cable look more last gen than ever, and if it wasn't for that headset and AirLink showing what can be achieved wirelessly in ideal conditions, then it wouldn't have caused quite the reaction we've seen since the announcement. But there it is, I do consider the cable to be a big deal in my particular circumstances, but it's understandable why Sony opted for it to keep costs and latency as low as possible and fidelity as high as possible. So let me know what you think in comments and I'm well aware that my own use case example won't translate for everyone and many people won't care about the cable at all. But that's it for this video, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.